The tragedy of the commons is a concern among biologists and social scientists alike. I'd rather refer to this as the problem of open access resources. In short, the tragedy of the commons occurs because each user receives direct benefit of using the resource, but only bears a fraction of the cost of its exploitation. So examples abound. I mean, it could be African elephants that are near extinction. It could be Amazon rainforest deforestation. It could be overfishing of many of the fisheries worldwide. It could be overfishing in the pond, say, right here. The idea behind this has been around for many years, but Garrett Hardin in his 1968 piece in Science was the first to bring us to the forefront about the time that the environmental movement began planning its first Earth Day. In Garrett Hardin's example, he presents us with an open access pasture. Anyone who wants to can bring their cattle to graze. Each rancher's goal is to maximize his or her private benefit. Every rancher has the incentive to bring more and more cattle to the pasture because they receive the direct benefit of grazing their cattle there. Unfortunately, they only bear a fraction of the cost of the overexploited pasture, so they're going to continue to add cow after cow until the pasture is overgrazed and destroyed and no longer usable as pasture land. In other words, their individual incentive invites overall ruin. For even though if they recognize that the pasture is being exploited, somebody else will bring a cow if they don't. And so they'll continue to do so. It's not that they don't know the assets being exploited, it's that if they wait and try to delay, it'll just be exploited by somebody else. The large issue here is there's a lack of excludability. The ranchers have no way of stopping others from adding cattle to the pasture. In his piece, Garrett Hardin suggested two main ways to go about solving the tragedy of the commons. The first is through privatization or private ownership. The second is through public ownership or government ownership. So whenever we have public ownership, I mean, one of the benefits is that we still all share the collective rights of this asset. This is one of the reasons why we have the national park system, to protect uh, natural open space at Yosemite and the beauty of Yellowstone and things of that nature. Well, one of the problems with public ownership is that the decision makers don't bear the cost of their actions, nor do they receive you know, additional value from any good decisions they make. For instance, imagine if you're a park ranger and you find some innovative way to you know, reduce large forest fires that adds value to the park itself. You don't receive the direct benefit of your decisions. You and your staff are not going to receive large pay raises or are not going to receive the large stream of value that comes from that decision. However, private ownership does solve this problem. With private ownerships, the decision maker bears the direct cost of their actions. And so, for any poor decision, they're going to bear the costs of. But any positive, innovative decision, they'll receive the benefits. So if you were a ranger or a park owner who'd have found this innovative way to solve the problem with forest fires, then you would receive the stream of value from that good decision. There's not a silver bullet to the problem of open access resources. There's not a one-size-fits-all strategy. But we do know that limiting access and ensuring that decision makers bear the costs of their actions allows us to address key concerns with open access resource problems.